In this example problem, we're going to create an unfactored moment axial force interaction diagram that includes slenderness effects uh, for the column shown. We have a 20 inch by 12 inch column with three number nine bars on each face. Our F prime C is four KSI and we have grade 60 steel, which means our F Y is 60 KSI. We have a, a simply supported column with uh, a axial load P applied at an eccentricity um, E top at the top and E bottom at the bottom. Uh, so our moment is equal to P times eccentricity. So our eccentricity tells us something about the uh, uh, ratio of applied moments. Um, the ratio of our bottom eccentricity to top eccentricity is 0.5. Um, so we'll use that in this expression. Uh, we are assuming in this example that we've already found our moment axial load interaction diagram for the cross section. Um, so this would be for our short column. And uh, I have another video where, where we go through and uh, calculate several points for uh, this cross section for the short column uh, moment axial force interaction diagram. Um, so we, we found that and uh, we have that shown here with our uh, pure compression, zero tension, balance point, tension controlled point, uh, pure moment, and uh, pure tension points. Um, so that's always the, the starting point uh, for developing a uh, moment axial force interaction diagram with slenderness, is we first need to find the interaction diagram for our short column uh, just for the cross section. Our first step is to check to see if our column is slender. Uh, so we'll need to find our KL over R, um, our slenderness ratio, and compare it to the slenderness uh, ratio limits for um, a, uh, a non-sway column uh, found in ACI. Uh, so we know for a rectangular section that our R is equal to um, square root of I over A equal to 0.3 times H. Plugging this into our uh, KL over R expression, uh, we'll have KL over 0.3H. Then we know our K factor is one for a pin-pin column. Uh, our column length is 20 feet converted into inches, so times 12, and then divided by 0.3 times 20 inches, which will give us a KL over R of 40 for our column. Now we need to calculate our, our limits. We know the ratio of our M1 to M2 is equal to the ratio of our um, bottom to top. So our ratio then is gonna be equal to um, 0.5. Uh, we have, negative 0.5 because our column is buckling in single curvature. So if it's um, single curvature, then we have a negative here. If it's double curvature, then this number would be positive. Um, but because we're, we're negative, or because we're single curvature, we have a negative. So uh, plugging that in, um, we'll get our, our KL over R needs to be less than or equal to um, 28 for us to be able to neglect slenderness and also uh, less than 40. Um, so our KL over R is equal to 40. Uh, which is greater than 28, so we need to include slenderness effects. Um, now, we can either include slenderness effects on our um, moment axial force interaction diagram, which we're going to do in this example, or we can apply our um, slenderness effects to our demand points. So we would just magnify our, our moment uh, that's applied to the section. Um, so I, I do that in a, in a separate example. The procedure for constructing the curve uh, will involve uh, the following steps. We'll start by choosing an, an axial load, uh, so PN in this case. Uh, we're gonna, for this given axial load, we're gonna compute the value of M such that our magnified moment lies on the interaction diagram. So um, we'll apply an axial load so that our magnified moment lies on our, uh, our, on our interaction diagram, our short column interaction diagram. We then go back and see um, what the combination of uh, axial load and moment would be, um, assuming that we didn't have slenderness. So just looking at um, our slope E. Uh, so that's how we get back to point E. Um, and then this point defines one point on our, uh, on our moment axial force interaction diagram that's considering slenderness. 
Um, we'll remember a couple different relationships. Uh, we need to remember that our uh, magnified moment is just our moment magnifier times mn. And our mn in this case is just our p times our eccentricity. Uh, we know that our uh, moment magnifier uh, delta is equal to our CM factor accounting for uh, the different loading conditions and, and uh, sway or non-sway. And then uh, divided by 1 minus PN over P critical. Uh, if we are using ACI and using the um, uh, strength reduction factors, we would need to include a 0.75 um, multiplier in front of our P critical um, in our, uh, our uh, moment magnifier equation here. Um, but then substituting that in, we can uh, relate our, our magnified moment um, to our axial load. And uh, we're going to use that uh, moving forward in this example. The first thing that we'll need to do is calculate our EI. We're going to use the detailed expression um, from ACI 318. Uh, so for this, our EI is a combination of our uh, concrete stiffness and our steel stiffness. So I, I'm going to find the um, individual, individual components, the concrete stiffness and steel stiffness, and then uh, combine them. Um, so we'll start with our concrete stiffness. Uh, we have our stiffness, our modulus is 57,000 uh, times the square root of 4,000 PSI divided by 1,000 pounds per kip, um, and then times our IG. I guess we have a 5 here, so I'm just going to put that uh, down at the bottom. Uh, but then our IG is just 12 inches times 20 inches to the third divided by 12. And uh, we'll get that equal to 5.77 times 10 uh, to the sixth. Our ES then is 29,000 um, times our IS component. So this will be 2 times 3 bars times we have number nine bars, so one square inch. And then times the distance from the centroid of our section um, to the centroid of our bars, which is 10 inches minus 2.5 inches squared. And this will give us an ESIS equal to 9.79 uh, times 10 to the sixth. Uh, we can then plug these into our EI, and we're going to assume um, that all of the load is sustained because we weren't given any information there. Um, so we'll find our uh, EI is equal to our 5.77 times 10 uh, to the 6th plus 9.79 times 10 to the 6th divided by uh, 1 plus 1, uh, which will give us an EI uh, equal to 7.8 uh, times 10 to the 6th. And our units here are kip inches squared. So now we have all the information we need to calculate our critical buckling load. And we can find our critical buckling load is equal to pi squared times 7.8 times 10 to the sixth divided by, um, so our k is 1. Our length is 20 feet, and then we need to convert this to inches um, squared, which will give us a P critical here uh, equal to 1,340 kips. 
Uh, we can then find our CM uh, factor. So our, our CM is just equal to uh, 0.6 uh, minus 0.4 times uh, M1 over M2. Um, it's negative again because it's been in single curvature, so we'll get our CM to be equal to um, 0.8. Then we can plug these values into our moment magnifier expression. And uh, this will be the expression we use um, to uh, uh, calculate our moment magnifier uh, based on any given uh, p sub n that we use. Uh, with this moment magnifier, we can uh, then um, compute our um, moment axial force interaction diagram considering slenderness. Uh, so we're going to first consider the axial loads above the balance point. And we're going to consider uh, our short column interaction diagram, um, assuming that we have a straight line um, between our pure compression capacity and our balance point. So we're assuming on our MN diagram, uh, we're assuming that we have a straight line um, between our compression, uh, pure compression, and our balance points. Um, and I'll finish off. So this is, sorry, this is our N and our M. Um, so we can just use a linear regression to uh, develop an equation. Uh, relating our moment to our axial load um, ab above our balance point. Uh, and then we can set this moment equal to the magnified moment. Uh, so we know that our magnified moment is just our moment magnifier times Pn times E. And we can plug in our moment magnifier that we had uh, on the previous slide. Um, and take it times Pn times E to get this uh, this expression on the, on the left, and then set it equal to our Mn expression that we have here. We can then solve for E, and then um, plug this E back into our M expression, so our moment is equal to Pn times E, and uh, we'll get this expression then here. And we can use this expression, um, so this will be our um, our our plot, our, our plot uh, above our balance point um, that'll take into account our slenderness. Uh, so we can solve for a, a number of different points. And uh, these will be our points um, above the balance point on our moment axial force interaction diagram that includes the, the slenderness effects. We can next solve for uh, several additional points, um, looking at axial loads below the balance point. Uh, so we'll just choose a load below the balance point. Uh, we'll just choose a load of uh, p n equals 300. Um, if, you know, if you have an Excel sheet that you're setting up, you can do a lot um, more different points. Um, but you know, we're just going to choose a, a load that's right around where our tension control limit was. Um, so for this uh, axial load, we can find our moment from our short column diagram. Um, so for an axial load of 300 kips, our moment uh, on our short, short column moment axial load interaction diagram is 4,597 kip, kip inches. Um, we know that from before that our um, moment magnifier times P times E uh, is equal to this expression here, which is equal to our MN um, which we found, we can solve for E. And then we can plug in our E here in our MN expression. Uh, so PN times E. Uh, so PN times E uh, will give us, um, and for our, a PN of 300 kips, uh, will give us a moment here of 4,460. Um, so you can see that in this case, slenderness is going to decrease our, our moment capacity um, from 4,597 uh, 4, to uh, 4,460. Um, so you can follow uh, this procedure that I lay out here. Um, we can also see that our, our moment magnifier is equal to uh, you know, this expression here, CM over 1 minus PN over PCR. 
Um, so the above procedure is equivalent to just saying that our um, mn slender is equal to our mn short divided by um, our moment magnifier. Um, so that's another another easier, more straightforward way to uh, to just calculate your um, um, your mn slender. We can do uh, the same procedure for other axial loads. Um, so here we're just going to choose another axial load. We're going to choose an axial load of uh, 200 kips. Um, and on our short column diagram, we can see that for 200 kips, we have an MN equal to 4,153 kip inches. Uh, again, we can set our um, magnified or moment magnifier times PE um, and set it equal to this uh, moment. We can solve for E and then plug it into our MN times PN times E expression. And uh, we'll get our magnified moment, um, or our moments um, accounting for slenderness equal to uh, 4,416 kip inches. Uh, we can see that this um, moment that we found, including slenderness, is greater than um, the moment from our short column diagram. Uh, we normally um, don't let slenderness effects increase our moment capacity. Um, so we need to cap our moment strength here by our short column strength. Uh, or we can also say that our moment magnifier needs to be greater than or equal to one. Um, so here for this point, we're going to use um, an MN equal to um, the short column MN uh, 4,153. We can combine everything that, that uh, we put together on the previous slides uh, to get this, um, this short column moment axial force interaction diagram um, plotted along with the uh, slender column moment axial force interaction diagram. And uh, so you can see that our slenderness will decrease our strength um, in the compression zone uh, until we reach a, a certain point. And then in the tension zone, our, uh, our slenderness effects won't affect our capacity. And uh, this is just because when our column is in tension or not in substantial compression, um, you know, just has a, a small amount of compression, uh, buckling is not going to be a concern for us. You, you can't buckle a column in tension. Uh, so anyway, we can uh, then, this is our, our moment axial force interaction diagram. Uh, so we could compare any of our demand points um, to our short column curve and uh, make sure that our demand falls within our short column curve uh, to ensure that uh, the, the column will, um, won't fail under that uh, load combination. Um, note that we already included the um, slenderness effects in our MN diagram. So uh, our load combination we don't need to include um, slenderness effects. So if you have a number of different load combinations that you need to check, uh, it'll be easier for you to calculate a slender column moment axial force interaction diagram, and then just check it against the um, M and N, the MN demand, um, not including slenderness. Uh, so that concludes uh, this example problem.